morning and welcome. This is the India Today News Track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Was the coronavirus made in a biology laboratory in Wuhan in China? American President Donald Trump has now ordered an official probe. This has been doing the rounds in the dark internet, on the conspiracy circle for a very long time. Now on the news track tonight, we will look at all the scientific evidence at hand and try and ask the question whether there is some element of truth to whether the Wuhan virus was manufactured in a virology laboratory. That's my top focus on the news track tonight. Did the coronavirus escape from a Chinese lab? New US cables explode on China. Was an unsafe Wuhan laboratory breeding the coronavirus? Is China covering up the truth? What does China have to hide? New biolab theory rocks the world. As always on the news track, I want to show you the big picture in the global battle against the coronavirus. On the Corona India dashboard, let's start with the global update tonight. 2 million, 1, 2, uh, 2.1 million cases, 1,47,337 deaths, 5,54,000 recoveries. Uh, in our country at this moment, there are 13,835 confirmed cases with 452 deaths. Maharashtra is the uh, state that leads the number of cases uh, of the coronavirus in India. 3,205 confirmed cases, 194 deaths. Delhi comes in uh, at the second spot with 1,640 confirmed cases and 38 deaths. I want to show you the world trajectory at this moment. This is the number of cases. China, of course, is uh, the country with the longest graph, but now being able to flatten the curve com quite completely. In India, if you see this, and if I can have our producer zoom in so that you can see this, the orange line is the Indian line. And f at this moment, it seemed that the line was growing upwards in a dangerous way. From there, the graph is actually coming down, where we're now at a space where the number of cases is doubling at less than a week which is good news, which means that the lockdown is proving to be successful, uh, relatively speaking, and that if things stay the way they are, we're not going to see the kind of situation that Italy, uh, the United States, and Spain had to deal with. This is the graph of Indian states. Here as well, Maharashtra with the longest line. Uh, but the good thing is, whether it is a Rajasthan, uh, whether it is a Tamil Nadu, the number of cases isn't skyrocketing. Those states which seemed problematic earlier haven't seen a big spike. It's Madhya Pradesh now which seems to be the problem area, especially in the area around Indore. And one of the problems for Madhya Pradesh has been that at the crucial time when steps needed to be taken, Madhya Pradesh didn't have a government in place. Uh, there was a political transition from Kamal Nath to, uh, uh, to Shivrat Singh Chauhan and that's caused some grief for Madhya Pradesh. However, the critical question is will they be able to bring the number of cases under control? That's what we're looking out for. At this moment, in Maharashtra, 289 new cases were reported, in Gujarat, 164, in Madhya Pradesh, 133 new cases were reported. Let's take you through the headlines. I'm tracking at 8 p.m. this Friday evening. Health Ministry says there's a 40% decline in the growth factor of coronavirus cases in India. 80% COVID positive care patients are recovering. Another VVIP lockdown violation. Former Karnataka Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy's son gets married as social distancing rules are flouted. Guests seen without any masks. Corona warriors targeted this time in Rajasthan, mob fell stones at a patrol party. Three cops are injured, seven people arrested so far. RBI announces multiple economy boosters, allows banks to maintain lower liquidity coverage ratio. Center to announce stimulus 2.0 focused on uh, MSMEs and migrants soon. India today tracks down Tablighi Jamaat chief Maulana Saad's Delhi hideout. 
Income Tax Department is now probing an alleged tax evasion by the Jamaat chief. United Nations Security Council throws its weight behind the World Health Organization, says not right to blame the global agency after Trump suspends funding over mishandling of coronavirus cases. The world is not prepared. None of the none of country can ever imagine this. So we can't solely blame who. For many weeks now, it has been insinuated that the coronavirus that the world is dealing with was manufactured in a bioweapons uh, uh, laboratory in China's Wuhan. Now, China is denying this completely. But last night, American President Donald Trump ordered an official investigation, saying this is a line that's not just uh, being insinuated and spoken of in conspiracy circles, but the U.S. government is now officially probing. So I want to show you this report, which looks at what's happening in America and China's response. Then we'll dive deep into this question to try and establish whether there is some veracity to the charge that the Wuhan virus was made in a laboratory. Take a look at our lead story tonight. Did the novel coronavirus escape from a Chinese viral laboratory in Wuhan? You've probably heard this theory at least once since the outbreak began. Except now, the most powerful country in the world is officially investigating the possibility. A set of diplomatic cables accessed by US media paint a terrifying picture of an inadequately secured virology lab in Wuhan. The cables are talking about this facility, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, part of the Chinese government's larger Hubei Engineering and Technology Research Center for Viral Diseases. First, let's break down the explosive new developments in chronological order. After a visit to Wuhan in 2018, US science diplomats reported unsafe conditions at the Wuhan Virology Institute, deeming the bat research risky. Cut forward two years and the cables are providing glaring clues into what may have happened. So far, the most commonly held belief is that the Wuhan virus came from one of the city's wet markets, likely from the sale and consumption of bats. The viral lab escape theory has now gained credence though, with American experts sniffing a massive Chinese cover-up centered around the Wuhan lab. Well, sources are telling Fox News today that the United States government now has high confidence that while the coronavirus is a naturally occurring virus, it emanated from a virology lab in Wuhan. That because of lack safety protocols, an intern was infected who later infected her boyfriend and then went to the wet market in Wuhan where it began to spread. Does that correspond with what you have heard from well, officials? Well, I don't want to say that, John, but I will tell you uh, more and more we're hearing the story. And we'll see. When you say multiple sources, now there's a case where you can use the word sources, but uh, we are doing a very thorough examination of this horrible situation that happened. This is a, uh, a laboratory that contained uh, highly contagious uh, materials. Uh, we knew that. We knew that they were working on this program. Many, many countries have programs like this. We're doing a, a full investigation of uh, everything we can to learn how it is the case that this virus got away, got out into the world, and now has created so much, so much tragedy, so much death here in the United States and all around the world at an enormous cost to the global economy as yeah. well. According to U.S. media reports, the virus is believed to have jumped from a bat to a lab employee in Wuhan who later spread the virus across the city. The theory suggests China's ruthless competitiveness has driven it to research bat viruses without adequate safeguards and that the coronavirus may have been transmitted to a lab employee who then disseminated it to Wuhan's public. China's position with regard to the origin and transmission routes of the novel coronavirus is clear. It is a matter of science on which we should only rely on the findings of scientists and medical experts. I would like to remind you that the WHO has repeatedly stated that there is no evidence showing the virus was made in a lab. Many renowned medical specialists in the world have also debunked the lab leakage theory as it is not science-based at all. There's a lot of uh, uh, rumor and speculation in a wide variety of uh, uh, media, the blog sites, etc. Uh, it should be no surprise to you that we've taken a keen interest in that uh, and we've had uh, a lot of intelligence uh, take a hard look at that. 
Uh, and I would just say at this point, it's inconclusive, uh, although the weight of evidence seems to indicate uh, natural. Uh, but we don't know for certain. The U.S. cables also cast a glare on Shi Zheng Li, a Chinese virologist nicknamed Batwoman for her bat-centric research and fieldwork. The cables say her work was conducted with inadequate protection. Xi's team was the first to reveal in February that the new outbreak was a bat-derived coronavirus. As the world battles COVID-19, the US cables have major implications for global safety and amplify the glaring question, is China lying about the very origin of the coronavirus? And more importantly, will we ever know? Bureau Report, here today. Joining me to make sense of the charges that are flying thick and fast, Lieutenant General Velu Nayar, former Director General Medical Services of the Indian Army. Remember, the Indian Army has a very major biological weapons component and we'll try and make sense of how this fits into all the work the General Iyer has done through his lifetime. Anand Krishnan is one of our foremost China experts, former colleague of ours at India Today, and uh, Brahma Chalani is far and away one of the leading experts on China and has been raising questions about China's protocols for the longest time. Brahma, I want to start with you, sir. We've seen this chart. So far, it wasn't taken completely seriously because this was something which was being said uh, in conspiracy circles. Now you've got the President of the United States, high-ranking officials of his administration saying they are seriously investigating this probe. Does this mean that America, you believe, has found new evidence to substantiate the charge that this virus could potentially have emerged in a laboratory? Or is this just down to American politics with Donald Trump trying to find some kind of an expert, some kind of a alibi for his own incompetence? Well, the U.S. is waking up late to what Chinese scientists themselves said in early February. In early February, there was a study done by scientists at the South China University of Technology, which is in Guangzhou. That study was funded by the National Science Foundation in China. The conclusion was that this virus is a natural virus. It's not a bioweapon. It's a natural vi virus which leaked from one of the two Wuhan labs that were working on bad coronaviruses. That paper, that study, appeared on ResearchGate, and then after a few days, it disappeared. But a copy of that study is still available on the internet. Now, that was in early February. Two months later, the Americans are echoing exactly the same conclusion. They're saying they suspect that this is a natural virus that leaked either from the Wuhan Center for Disease Control which is located only a few hundred meters from the so-called wet market in Wuhan, or it leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which was receiving a State Department grant to work on coronaviruses. So they suspect that either of the two labs was the source of this leak, this escape of a deadly virus. The question that arises is, why was China, why were these two Chinese labs in Wuhan working on deadly bat-derived coronaviruses. In fact, just a month before the epidemic unfolded in Wuhan, one of the two labs was advertising jobs for specialists to work on bat now, coronaviruses. Anand Krishnan, that there is a virology laboratory at a very short distance from the Wuhan wet market from where this virus emerges, you'd say this to someone and he says, hmm, this looks fishy or this looks batty. Now, you've been looking at all the defenses coming out of China. Uh, how strong is the Chinese defense on this? Have they been able to logically explain how these two viruses are different or is there a sense of guilt and admission that maybe one of their biology experiments just went wrong and that's the mess the world is dealing with? So, Rahul, there are two different questions uh, here. Uh, one is, was this virus made in a lab? And the second is, did it leak from the lab? So one question is fairly easy to answer. Uh, the first question, that it was uh, made in a lab, I think with a high degree of certainty, virologists are saying that is not the case. 
because they studied the genome and it's very, very similar to naturally occurring bat coronaviruses. So I think we can say with a high degree of certainty this wasn't made in a lab. So whether or not this leaked from a lab, the uncomfortable truth is it's a question we probably may never know the answer to because the original bat source, whether it was a bat that was being studied in the lab, whether it was a bat at the wet market, whether it was a bat that infected a pangolin that was sold at the wet market, this is something that it's going to be very difficult for anyone to prove uh, with a high degree of certainty. No, but when you quote Chinese scientists who are saying, we've studied the genomes, and the genome of the coronavirus, the COVID-19, is different from the genomes of the viruses we were working on, that's only their claim. It's not as if that's been peer-reviewed and American or Indian scientists have studied it. All we have are a bunch of Chinese scientists controlled by the Communist Party, which in any case is known for lack of transparency, saying that the genomes are different. None of us in the outside world have any independent authentication of this claim. Would that be correct, Anand? I think that's correct. The, I think the question that this hinges on is whether or not uh, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, was being studied at the lab. And that's frankly something that we, we don't know unless they open up the lab and let people come and see for themselves. Shu Zheng Li, who, who you mentioned in your report, uh, has been on record saying that when she first heard of this outbreak, uh, you know, she was in a cold sweat and she wondered if it was something from their lab. But they subsequently went back and checked and they found that it was something similar to what they were studying, but it was a different virus. But like you said, it's just their word and there's no way we would know for sure unless they open up the lab and let scientists from the U.S. and elsewhere in the world come in and actually see what it is that they were doing. So let me bring in a lifetime expert on this. Lieutenant General Velu Nayar, former Director of General Medical Services of the Indian Army. As somebody who studied biological weapons, can you dive deep into the charges that are flying thick and fast and what you make of the American probe and the Chinese denial? General Velu Nayar. Firstly, thank you, Rahul, for having me on the show. And uh, I just heard the preceding discussions. And uh, obviously, it boils down to two things. A, is it an accidental leak from the virological labs working in Wuhan? Or indeed, it's a natural occurrence from the wet markets in Wuhan and getting to the human beings as a zoonotic transmission. Now, this will be conjectural to an extent because whatever the Chinese have put out and whatever the experts have seen in terms of genomic sequencing, it does not seem to be a, a synthesized genomic sequence. It seems to be the virus itself as, as found in the corona family. Now, having said that, obviously, it needs validation from peer groups across the world, which is today actually conspicuous by its absence. Now, explain to now, me, sir, as a layperson, my biology was never good, but I want to understand from you, how does it jump a species? How would a virus leave the bat? Even if, for example, in the Wuhan laboratory, they were tinkering around with this virus and they had some live yes, bats yes, with them, how did it leave the bat and enter the human being, the homo sapiens, which ordinarily doesn't happen so often? So what would have been different? What could have been different this time? So, this is... It's a very interesting, very interesting question. This, this zoonotic diseases which we talk about is a, is a jump from the animals to the homo sapiens. And usually we are ourselves the cause of it. For example, from deforestations to taking out the natural habitats of various, from bats to various animals. So what is a natural habitat in animals tries to adapt and adopt into a new species, the closest available, which is flourishing with urbanization and deforestation, cutting into rural areas all over the world, uh, from the Amazon forest to our own country, zoonotic diseases come into being. So they find to adopt and adapt because they are very good at this. The viruses, the rickettsia, the bacteria, for survival, they are the best. So they can easily skip a complete species to come into a new species. That's, that's the genesis of zoonosis or zoonotic diseases from plague to what we are talking about right now. What I want to do now, is uh, I want to I show our viewers, you did, but I, I want to show our viewers this uh, excerpt from a documentary done, which just been released 
and uh, this is from Joshua Phillips. He works for the Epoch Times. Uh, he has looked, at, he's spoken to a whole range, uh, range of experts and has put together a documentary which looks at the origins of the virus. So this is Joshua Phillips. This is not an India Today report. We're condensing parts of the documentary to help you make sense of why is it that it's now a matter of serious investigation that the novel coronavirus may not have originated in the Wuhan seafood market but rather in a lab which was suspiciously close to the Wuhan wet market. Take a look. Wuhan is the capital of Hubei province, the largest city in central China. Huangnan Seafood Market is located in Jianghan district of Wuhan city and is a large comprehensive market that includes pork and a variety of frozen seafood, flavored spices, as well as some game meats. The first thing that received public attention about the epidemic was an internal notice from the Wuhan Health Commission. There has been a continuous occurrence of pneumonia cases of unknown cause. The notice issued on December 30, 2019, clearly required all medical units to report similar cases of unknown pneumonia. The notice started spreading online, and on December 31st, 2019, the Wuhan Health Commission issued a public notice for the first time, saying that some medical institutions found a link between the pneumonia cases and the Huanan seafood market. However, the notice pointed out that there was no evidence of obvious human-to-human -human transmission and no infection among medical personnel. On January 1st, 2020, the Hunan Seafood Market posted a notice of closure. This was followed by a thorough cleanup of the market, which as an investigative reporter seemed rushed. Shan virus. In short, scientists found the Wuhan coronavirus, the current pandemic, is highly similar to a bat SARS-like coronavirus previously discovered by the Nanjing Military Research Institute, showing 100% amino acid similarity in NSP7 and envelope protein, the E protein. What does this high similarity reveal? Hard to see uh, proteins 100% identical when the virus jumps species. And so that was suggesting uh, maybe the virus could be generated with a reverse engineer process. I certainly believe that the 100% amino acid sim similarity says it can't possibly be a natural mutation. January 23rd, 2020. The Wuhan virus exploded. While Wuhan announced the lockdown of the city, Xi Jengli and her team released a paper stating that the Wuhan coronavirus was of probable bat origin. This was published in Nature on February 3rd. The paper indicated that the Wuhan virus utilized the same key as SARS to gain entry into the human body. She also announced the 2019 NCOV genome sequence was 96.2% consistent with a bat coronavirus originating in Yunnan, China, called RATG13, signaling a natural source of the Wuhan virus. However, Xi Jianli's natural origin assertion is doubtful. The outbreak occurred in Wuhan, the same location as the P4 laboratory where she was based and which housed highly similar viruses. Common sense would lead the government to first inspect the P4 laboratory for any leakage incident and potential safety concerns. Instead, they shifted public attention from the P4 laboratory to the South China Seafood Wholesale Market that sold no bats and designated it as the origin of the disease. At the same time, authorities sealed off all virus samples prevented international experts from joining the investigation and used national television to slander doctors such as Li Wenliang, who disclosed the outbreak for spreading rumors. If the Wuhan virus indeed emerged naturally, why would the CCP need to censor relevant news or block investigations? Could the Wuhan P4 laboratory have its secrets? Virus samples and genome sequences Maybe the exact ingredients we need to find our answers. January 2nd, an email from the Director General of the Institute to all internal staff was circulated. The subject was, notice regarding the strict prohibition of disclosure 
of any information related to the Wuhan unknown pneumonia. National Health Commission clearly mandates that all detection, empirical data, results, and conclusions related to this outbreak cannot be published on self-media or social media, nor disclosed to any media, including state media, or collaborative organizations, including any technical services companies. January 21st, a new drug, Remdesivir, provided for free by the United States to China for Wuhan coronavirus treatment was preemptively patented by the Institute. February 3rd, Dr. Wu Xiaohua blew the whistle using his real name that Xi Zhengli's haphazard laboratory management may have led the Wuhan virus to leak from the lab. February 4th, chairman of Duo Yi, Xu Bo, blew the whistle using his real name that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was suspected of manufacturing and leaking the Wuhan virus. February 7th, top biochemical weapon expert of the People's Liberation Army, Chen Wei, officially assumed control over Wuhan Institute of Virology's P4 laboratory. So what should be done next? I want to put that question first to Brahma Chalani. Do you believe so that world has closure to this important question? China should make available all of what was happening in that now very suspicious virology laboratory to scientists from outside China so there can be a proper thorough review. China is not like India. In India, all, you know, all um, information gets leaked. Go on. Um, yes, uh, sorry, uh, there was a, there's an incoming call. Um, well, China is a very tightly controlled society. It is a society where the central government controls every aspect of public life, including private life. The Wuhan labs that were studying bad coronaviruses have now come under tighter control. Several of their key personnel have disappeared. We will never get to the bottom of this, um, of this story as to what happened, how the, how the epidemic unfolded in Wuhan. But if you look at it more broadly in terms of, um, of, um, of this pandemic and, and what it does to the image of China, it's very clear that China faces lasting damage to its reputation oh, and also damage to its economic interests. Oh, sure. To give you but one you know, example, Anand Krishnan, Brahma Chalani makes a very important point that there are scientists who are now reported to have gone missing even at some point in time if China makes available if all the samples that were collected inside this uh, virology laboratory to the outside world. We don't know what they would have destroyed. I mean, China does have a bit of a reputation there. Even if they invite outsiders, by now they might have cleaned the whole place out. Yeah, it's possible, Rahul. And I think, as uh, Brahma said, there's a high likelihood that we may never know uh, the, the source of, of what happened. So, of course, I think it's important. I think it's in China's own interest to, to open up and let scientists from around the world come in and, and see what was happening, even if it might be too late, as you suggested. Uh, but I think that I think the uncomfortable question, Rahul, is that this is one of those uh, questions that might not have an answer in the short term. Even if you look at SARS and MERS, there have been theories that suggest strongly where the origin was, but even that's still being debated where SARS actually came from. So it may be a long while before we know what exactly happened, but I think until we find out, these accusations and speculation is, is likely to continue. Krishnan, Brahmachalani, Lieutenant General Velu Nayar. For joining me on the first part of News Strike tonight. Thank you very much. India under lockdown, the government has set very specific and strict rules and guidelines. But are these rules being applied equally for everyone? Former Karnataka Chief Minister H.T. Kumaraswamy flouted the lockdown rules as his son got married in a so called Loki ceremony in Ramanagra. There was no social distancing, no one wore masks, and the, the couple claimed, and so did the father that they actually had permission from the state government for this small wedding in the middle of a national lockdown. A Bangalore Bureau with the story. Amid the nationwide lockdown, a wedding ceremony complete with all finery being held near Bengaluru. 
but this is no ordinary wedding. This is the VVIP wedding of former Karnataka Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy's son Nikhil with Revati, the grandniece of former State Congress Minister M. Krishnappa. Dressed in white, Nikhil and Revati tied the knot between 9.20 and 9.50 a.m. as the Mahurat was set for this period. The venue was the Kumaraswamy family farmhouse in Ramanagara. And even though the former Karnataka chief minister had declared that it was going to be a low-key wedding because of the coronavirus pandemic, it seems this wedding was anything but that. There were violations galore at this VVIP wedding. None of the guests wore masks. Kumaraswamy claimed that he had planned to invite close to 5 lakh people. Thankfully, he cancelled the big bash, but there were still close to 100 people in attendance. This video of the groom Nikhil Kumaraswamy, seated in a chair with guests and camera persons crowding around, shows that social distancing norms were also not being followed. All these photographers are private professionals hired specially for the wedding. Another video, however, shows some guests sitting with chairs apart. Particularly, this issue was in limelight. Even after a lot of warning, an intimation. If any kind of violation has happened, we need to find out and suitable action will be taken against the concerned people. The high profile political wedding also saw at least 21 cars carrying guests to the wedding venue. When movement on roads is blocked due to the lockdown, why was special permission given for these VIP guests? Devagoda is a very responsible citizen. Devagoda and Kumar Swami has redone whatever responsibility they have to do. Hindu weddings do happen due to a lot of uh, uh, astronomy, astrology, numerology. That's when the timing is decided. Based on the timing it was decided. India has been under lockdown for 24 days now. Citizens have been asked to strictly follow all safety precautions. But do the same rules not apply to India's VIPs? With Nagar Jundwar Kanath and Nolan Pinto, Bureau Report, India Today. Tanvir Ahmed is a spokesperson for the Janta Dal Secular. Tina Phillip is an actor who we invited to join us because her marriage has been postponed as a consequence of the wedding. And I want Tanvir first to listen to uh, Tina's story about what they were planning to do, how they've changed their mind, and then want the Neta to respond to why his boss couldn't do the same. So Tina, please tell us what happened. So um, my wedding was due to happen in Mumbai on the uh, 4th of April, but way before the lockdown was announced officially, uh, me and my fiance and our families decided to uh, postpone the date and we still don't know when we're going to have the wedding but uh, taking into consideration the health and safety of everybody including our guests and other vendors who uh, were meant to uh, take care of our wedding taking uh, uh, keeping in mind the health and safety of everybody, we decided to postpone our wedding. And it was quite unfortunate. We were quite upset. But I think uh, it was more important to take care of, uh, to keep in mind everybody else's safety rather than being selfish and thinking about our own wedding. It's the point, uh, Mr. Ahmad. Everyone else should do the right thing, behave responsibly, put their personal interest uh, behind the larger societal good, but India's netas should do what they will because unki shadi fix ho to thodi change karenge. How does this make any sense? Why look at these pictures from different parts of our country of young boys and girls who pushed their wedding online? They had virtual ceremonies or they had virtually nobody if it was a physical ceremony, just the couple, the very close friends, it's like one or two family members, and that's it. Uh, some of the Sangeets are happening online, you see those images on the screen, uh, the, the friends are dancing, the shadow video and it's all online. Why can't Netas follow the same example? Why did H.T. Kumaraswamy, who till recently was Chief Minister of the State of Karnataka, not do the right thing? Why break so many laws? Where are the masks? Why no social distancing, Tanvir? Rahul, firstly, uh, uh, I don't think you know you can really uh, from expecting from 15 lakh people to attend the wedding to mere 60 people I think we have really taken enough care about it secondly we had followed no, one all second. The you're not doing anyone a favor Mr. Ahmad 
I hope you realize how ridiculous your argument sounds. You're doing no one a favor. 60 people is 60 violations of social distancing. I'm a chief minister. And this type of, you know, Sangeet had already happened on media and on, on, on social network. A lot of people did wish Nikhil Kumar Swami who could not attend the wedding, the MLS, the MPs. The Prime Minister of the country was supposed to attend the program. The President of country was supposed to attend the program. We had cancelled everything, absolutely everything. Hindu weddings do happen because of timings, astrology, a lot of... Yeah, so did everyone else's. So did everyone else's wedding. It's not and just H.D. Kumaraswamy and his son. Tina wants to come in and respond to you. Wait. Listen to Tina. Tina, go ahead. This is a VVIP culture that needs to end and it's a vulgar display of wealth. Uh, even in the West, uh, Princess Beatrice had cancelled the wedding which was due on the 29th of May. Don't get carried uh, away just because they don't use big jargonated yeah. words. Don't be very verbosic. We understand what you mean. I wish you that your wedding is going to be successful. I hope and pray that you know your wedding is going to be absolutely successful. Just because you can say don't, don't use big words please. What does big words have? One second, sir. Mr. Mr. Tanvir Ahmad. One second, one second, Tina. Let me deal with him. Who do you think your boss has done a favor by calling instead of 15 lakh people, 60 people? 60 people is 60 violations of the curve. So you won't break the law in a big way. Breaking it in a relatively smaller way, that's okay. That's absurd. What you're saying, Tanvir Ahmad, is beyond ridiculous. Rahul, Rahul. Following the guidelines which is given by police, following the guidelines which is given by the administration, following the guidelines of WHO, everybody was sanitized. Every single day. Sir, one, one second, one second. Let's take those pictures. Tanvi Rehmat. Tanvi Rehmat, see these pictures. That's a drone shot right above. You know the aerodynamic simulation that I ran from we the Netherlands it. said there it. should be a six. Because you thought you'd done nothing wrong, you thought you'd done everyone a favor. By calling 60 people instead of calling 1500, there must have been at least 500 policemen around trying to keep other people from coming in. Won't you add them to the number? Look at these drone pictures. Everyone is standing right next to each other. What rules have you followed in this case, Tandir Ahmad? Every single rule was followed. Which Everybody rule? Where are the masks? Where are the masks? Why is no one wearing a mask? Everybody's temperature was checked. Everybody it's was uh, the, the people who were coming there was ensured. Their medical records were taken care. Fifteen doctors in the family were absolutely at the helm of the affair. Uh, uh, see Rahul, it is customary when somebody gets married, you have to wish the couple. You have to wish the couple. We would let us play politics some other time. Let us really do ba 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 bashing little later. No, no, it one is second, customary, one don't you let's, think, Rahul? Let, no, no, one second, Mr. Ahmad. Let's not take away anything from this young man's wedding, okay? And I do dearly wish the boy and uh, girl all the very best. May they live happily ever after. But they really set a wrong example, Tina, because when you want Netas to lead the way, to lead society, to lead the country and the people at a time of great distress, they are showing that we won't break the rule, we won't do a grand wedding. 60 people is okay. So what if none of them have masks? How is that all right? And what about the vendors? What about people who work behind the scenes? What about their health and safety? Wasn't there any other auspicious day in the entire year? That seems ridiculous to me. You could have pushed the wedding, Tanvir Ahmad. You could have pushed the wedding. You would have had people, instead of drawing the kind of negative publicity that you have, this wedding has received condemnation nationally. It was badly timed. Such the and wrong example. Coming from a man whose job it was. And you're saying you have police permission. Who buys that? The police people report to the political masters, all of whom are your friends. Why, if Tina wanted to get married or somebody else wanted to get married, would they get permission? 500 policemen, 60 people, will they get permission? In other parts of the country, for much lesser offense, people have been put behind bars, Mr. Ahmad. There cannot be one rule for the common man and one rule for India's netas. Be certain about that. Rahul, Rahul, I am absolutely not putting across any argument. I am just trying here to say that, Rahul, I am a very concerned citizen, so is Mr. H.D. Kumar Swami, so is Mr. David Gowda. Uh, you know, by saying this, we, we, are, we are saying that the former Prime Minister and former Chief Minister doesn't understand rule and regulation. No, they certainly do. They have consulted with enough 
people in the system. The current government is of Mr. Of BJP. Mr. Redurapa is the chief minister. As I told you that the invitation was given even to the I prime minister of help. India. And, and, and Tina, 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 regarding you said, was there any no other day? Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know, but the, 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 the astrologer whom uh, Deva Gaudaji and uh, the family concerned, it was the auspicious day, it was the auspicious time which was given. The mother, father what and few relatives had You know, gone. one second. The Mahurat doesn't just come out for Kumaraswamy's son. Mahurats come out equally for the rest of the country as well. And if the leaders of this country expect everyone else to follow social distancing norms, Tanvi Ahmad, your boss has done the wrong thing. He should have, he had the choice. He could have set the right example like Tina did. He thought he's a neta and he can get away with it and therefore he did. This is what is terribly wrong. I salute and applaud the likes of Tina and so many conscientious citizens who took the right decision, made the right call. That is the way to have gone. And Tina, I wish you all the very best whenever it is that you do get married. And I am not taking anything away. We're not wishing this young man and his wife ill. What they did was wrong. Make right. absolutely no mistake about it. None of what Tanvir Ahmed has said, and even he knows it when the cameras aren't rolling, that what his boss did was wrong. He's a politician, he can't say it on television, but in his heart he knows what's right and what's not. And this wasn't right. Of that, there can be no doubt. Tina and Tanvir Ahmed for joining me on the news track tonight. Thank you very much. I've got breaking news coming in now that there's been a major political controversy around the Uttar Pradesh government's decision to send 300 buses to Rajasthan's Cochin town, Kota, to bring back students who are studying in this city. Now, thousands of students have been stuck in Kota for a long time. The Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has released a video message in which he alleges that this is discriminatory, this is injustice because the government is rescuing these students who come from relatively well-off households while it leaves the migrants to their own fate. Migrants, not just from Rajasthan but in other parts of the country, have been desperately pleading for transportation to take them back home. They've been told that that's not possible, it cannot be arranged because we're in the middle of a national lockdown and suddenly, because you've got these kids from relatively well-off backgrounds, you, you have the government sending buses to now take them home. Massive controversy breaking out this evening over the story. I have come from and I have got 100 buses. I have to take the kids to the kota. How did the route be made? Sir, my route is from Jhansi. So, sir, how do you do the social distancing? We have to do it as well. The children who came here, we have screened the children on the border. They have no problem with their health. इन तमाम तथ्यों को, को हम लोगों ने हमारे स्वास्थ्य विभाग की टीम ने जिला प्रशासन ने पूरी मुस्तैदी के साथ बॉर्डर पर यह काम किया है लेकिन ये लॉकडाउन है ये समझना बहुत जरूरी है सोशल डिस्टेंस ही एकमात्र दवा है कोई वैक्सीन नहीं आया है तो ये बच्चे ये होनहार बच्चे हैं वो विभिन्न प्रक्षेत्र से गुजरते हैं उनको भेजने का औचित्य क्या खिला cities of Uttar Pradesh will these kids go back to uh, and how many students are there and how was it that was decided that these bus needed to come to Rajasthan? Well, uh, Rahul, everyone knows that Kota is a hub, a coaching hub uh, in India and students from across UP are there in Kota currently. There are students from Jhansi, Agra, Banda, uh, Mahua, Lucknow and Varanasi and various other parts of Uttar Pradesh. Not just Uttar Pradesh, there are students from Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and several other parts. The UP government, what it has done Rahul is that it has sent across 300 buses. Uh, there are around 8,000 students from Uttar Pradesh who are currently in uh, Rajasthan's quota. Arrangements have been made to send these students back to around 40 districts of Uttar Pradesh. Now, uh, 800, uh, the students who are there uh, they are from different parts of Uttar Pradesh, both the Rajasthan government and the Yogi Adityanath government. 
uh, want these students to return because they're having several pleas from these students. Now, what the other state governments are claiming is that this is discriminatory, not just towards the other students, but also towards the migrant laborers. What about them? Because there are several uh, laborers from different parts of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, who are currently stuck in different parts of Rajasthan, who are not being allowed to return to their respective states because the state government has blocked the borders, the borders have been sealed. This so is terribly wrong. You know, it's wrong at two levels. Right One, of course, we feel for these students and in a best case scenario, they should be home with their parents, their parents would be anxious, the students would be worried. But you also have to remember the plight of the migrants. They've been told to stay where they are in far more miserable conditions than these students. The students would have had a proper room. The migrants sometimes out in the open or have very, very cramped accommodation. You want the migrants to stay in. You won't provide them uh, any form of transportation to go back. And yet you provide these students with buses to go back home. This is, as Nitish Kumar says, injustice in the middle of a lockdown. If you're going to provide relief and succor, provide it to everyone or to no one. You can't have students being rescued and the migrants being told to stay. This is where I wrap up the news track for just uh, tonight. Remember, there is no weekend, no Monday, Tuesday. We're working 24-7. I'll be back at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. I want to leave you with pictures from across the globe of various iconic monuments lit up to salute Corona warriors. It's a beautiful picture to end this broadcast with. And I'll see you at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. Goodbye. Goodbye.